This is Grow Omaha Uncut, where you can watch our radio show, including what goes on in the commercial breaks. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Deals at your service. Uh, This is the only show in the metro area that talks about construction, real estate, business expansion, economic development, fun things related to your favorite city becoming even more vibrant and prosperous. Our sponsors are Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding. Now, without any further ado, it's time to introduce my co-host, a legendary real estate deal maker in the flesh, Trenton Maggid. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. Uh, try that again. Your microphone was off. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeff. Uh, good morning, Trenton. Should we introduce our guest? Absolutely. Um, our guest today. Coming to you from West Omaha. I don't know. Um, our, our guest. I don't think. I don't think anyone's heard a word you said. <laughs> I think, now it's oh, now you're good. Okay, say it again. Coming to you from West Omaha, Brad Williams Photography, owner and producer, and co-owner of ENA Consulting Engineers. Brad Williams. Hey, good morning, guys. That's the most creative interview or uh, intro I've ever had here on the Girl Omaha Show. And, and so professional sounding. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Yeah. The big, big voice and everything else. Brad, um, you are joining us today because we're going to do our call in show. Of course, uh, everyone knows Brad. Brad's on regularly and uh, uh, he helps us with a lot of things with the Girl Omaha. Uh, social media stuff and everything else and photography. But a lot of times when you hear Brad's voice, he's either co-hosting or it's call-in show. And that's what the case is today. So get or your... You're on our, uh, you're on our YouTube channel and you're watching Brad's amazing construction videos. That's a good point. But uh, today it's the call-in show and the number would be 402-558-1110. I almost gave the wrong number, 402-558-1110. So you wanna get your dialing fingers ready. And if you have any question about Omaha growth and development, wondering what's, you know, probably the most common questions are, what's going on at the corner of Maine and State? And usually it's 90th and center, but yeah. Okay. Or state and Maine, one of the, one of the two, (laughs) or, you know, why doesn't Omaha have this or anything else? So that's all fair game when we do our call in show. But before we did that, we had a restaurant review this week, Grow Omaha Eats, which is sponsored by Cheer Athletics. Uh, Cheer Athletics is the nation's number one gold standard all-star cheer gym. And uh, all-star cheer is a, a very popular competitive uh, athletics activity that so many kids around the country engage in. And we have a cheer athletics location right here in Omaha um, at Highway 50 and Highway 370 in Papillion. And uh, we urge you, if you have kids or grandkids, to check out Cheer Athletics. So the Girl Omaha Eats restaurant this week was Primos, which is the Mexican restaurant at 60th at 60th and Center. And Sarah Baker Hansen, who writes our Girl Omaha Eats reviews, said, "Yeah, it's a good place, but it's particularly good at breakfast." So the Grow Omaha team today decided to go have breakfast at Primos because we wanted to test whether Sarah Baker Hansen is accurate in her reviews. Guys, we had breakfast there. We got back to the studio about a half hour ago. What do we think? I love it. Uh, the Carnitas um, Benedict. Never had that before. It was fabulous. I got my hash browns crispy. Great service. And uh, they have good breakfast at Prebos. Yeah, I enjoyed what I had, too. Uh, Trends looked probably the best. I mean, it really had that that appeal, a visual appeal to it. But uh, I had a Primo's omelet and it was uh, fantastic. So. I had the huevos rancheros. They were good. We ordered uh, a side. I had a side of uh, breakfast sausage. Quite good. I would go back. So Sarah Baker Hansen, therefore it is official. She is an accurate restaurant reviewer because we tested what she said and, and agreed with her review. You can read that review And all of Sarah's Grow Omaha Eats restaurant reviews, simply by going to the Grow Omaha website and clicking on Eats, that's E-A-T-S on the navigation bar. And we also put them uh, every other week into our Grow Omaha newsletter. Well, fellas, let's go into our news of the week. After the news, we'll start answering phone calls and questions. But news of the week is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. 
EagleMortgageCompany.com. They know mortgages. They've known mortgages for well over 30 years. Holly Schneiderwind and her team of mortgage brokers are very customer service oriented, uh, work hard to make sure uh, you as a borrower are matched with the right home loan. And it doesn't matter whether you're going conventional or if you want to do the FHA, VA, they can help you with all of that. Sit down with them and they can Find out what your unique needs are. Shop a variety of banks that provide loans and match you up with the best one. EagleMortgageCompany.com. Well, guys, uh, some people may have heard this on the news just before our show started this morning, but OPPD is looking at investing $2 billion, with a B, billion dollars, in order to expand electricity generating capacity. And part of this is due to regular population growth and business growth, but a lot of it is due to industrial growth. You know, Omaha is a big data center uh, capital, one of the data center capitals of the country now, and uh, you need to produce a, a lot of electricity as um the economy has heated up. The electronic e-commerce and, and and all those related things have heated up uh, starting with the pandemic. There's more and more demand on data centers. They're, they're a good source of economic activity. So Omaha's got to crank it up so that we can have that reliable power for the long-term future. Yeah, I know when I was driving by the new Google data center uh, out on State Street the other day, they one the, the first buildings up, but also there's a huge substation going up right in front of it. So you can, anytime these data centers come in, you can see all the new power infrastructure going along the highways with their bright, shiny new poles. Yeah, OPPD has really become a big powerhouse. Kaboom, <laughs> thank you. And uh, I remember when they were putting up the huge uh, high tension wires and everything, the wheels, how they, how they strung those wires. That was the coolest thing a few years ago. But it looks like, according to the articles, two and a half to 3% increases. I would think that a lot of that gets passed along to uh, the data centers, unless they have incentives or something like that. But um, the the consumers will stomach some of that. But uh, we need the if we need the infrastructure, we need it. Well, and and OPPD is doing a good job of mixing it up. You know, they still have their coal fired plant, which you know is kind of the old standby. And I know some people are not too excited about that environmentally, but. I think uh, it's nice to have some redundancy and some some uh, versatility in your power generating. They've really worked hard on these natural gas plants, which are a lot cleaner than coal. And then Trenton, I know you were involved in a in a land deal with OPPD a while back for a solar farm. Yeah, and they should still own. I mean, it was I'd only sold them part of it, but it's they have I think about t- at least twelve hundred acres along the. Uh, um, What's the corridor? It's a Platteview. Platteview Road Expressway. It'll eventually be an expressway, but uh, from about 156 all the way out to probably 192nd or something like that, there's a lot of controversy on whether that property should be held as farms to become uh, everything from shopping centers to office buildings and and neighborhoods. Uh, but they, they have to explore those different types of, of power and, and, you know, everybody's about clean energy nowadays, but it's got to make good economic sense. And I was just reading a, a thing about how um, microplastics, about when they recycle plastic bottles and everything, the human body is getting all kinds of small little bits of uh, plastic that can cause uh, cancers and things like that. So we all want to be uh, energy conscious. We all want to be environmentally friendly and stuff. But sometimes the the, um, the 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 effort can be negative. Like the cure is worse than the disease. Yeah, yeah and some of those uh, alternative energy things like the solar, that is an economic development driver to bring some of these big national companies that the chamber is trying to lure to Omaha and the metro area. You know, it's something they look for. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a plus. And, uh, you know, creating the solar panels and all that can be economic activity in and of itself. Uh, now, the question that's going to pop up from this, we know it's going to be coming. Some people are going to say, hey, if it's going to cause rates to go up, why do we want these damn data centers? Let's not have those. I think um, the argument can be made, though, that these data centers are, are cutting edge technology. They're a very big part of major um, economic production in this time in history. And I don't think Omaha wants to be 
without that. I don't. I, I think. I think we want to be in that game because there are a lot of collateral and related economic benefits from having these big data centers here. That it's worth it if we have to continue to upgrade our power supply. Well, it starts with the construction jobs, Jeff. Oh my yeah. You, someone sells the land. There's a lot of money that gets pumped into our economy, and these construction construction jobs have gone on for for. Almost what a decade probably by now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's a big plus. Well, something that's not quite as big as two billion dollars, but still a major project is the Omaha Public uh, Library's new central location, planned for the southwest corner of Seventy Second and Dodge. Uh, the city of Omaha announced this week through a press release that construction is about ready to begin. So this massive uh, 96,000 square foot central library, uh, which according to the architectural renderings will be absolutely beautiful, um, is going to replace the Dew Space. The Dew Space is the two-story building, which was once a Borders bookstore. Um, that's going to be demolished not too long from now. Yeah, we're really breaking down borders in Omaha. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be demolished not too long from now. Uh, the due space services will be temporarily relocated to the Abrams Library on 90th Street. And then nope. in 2026... North 90th. North 90th, yep. yep, clarification. And then in 2026, guys, we will have um, an absolutely beautiful library facility that will be an architectural landmark. And then I'll have about 90,000 square foot for lease, the former shop co at... 84th and, and Frederick, where the current administration and archives and distribution is being held at Frederick Square. So, so now, so now line up to lease that. So now Trenton is promoting listings uh, that will become available in, in 2026. That is a proactive broker right there. That's oh, why he, he's legendary. Uh, Brad, you know, you know a thing or two about buildings and and uh, architecture and all that sort of thing. This building truly will be a landmark. Yeah, it sure will be a, a nice centerpiece to kind of uh, balance out the new crossroads coming in across the streets. If I remember correctly, they're going to have about a 50-foot high warehouse with technology that that probably Amazon is, uh, is using where you can get any book within two minutes, the, the way the robots will work. It'll be that, it'll be that efficient. Well, the uh, city of Omaha is saying that this will be one of the single largest investments that a public library system in the United States has made in several years. Um, the space will have the normal library features, but it will also incorporate everything that people loved and currently love about do space. As far as some exact dates are concerned, uh, do Space's last day at 72nd and Dodge will be June 13th. It'll reopen in the temporary Abrams branch on June 17th. Um, they're going to have a, this is kind of interesting, a grand opening celebration for a temporary location on June, <laughs> on June 24th. Then, like we said earlier, the new Omaha Central Public Library expected to open sometime in 2026. I wonder if they're going to have like a garage sale or a, a state sale, you can get like a microfish machine or something like that. I'm sure there'll be a line out the door. So, guys, think about this. 2026, that's going to be a big year. So, Mutual of Omaha's skyscraper opens, the streetcar system opens, and this uh, landmark central library at 72nd and Dodge will open. We all have to uh, wait around for 2026 because we're going to have a lot to talk about on Girl Omaha. It's going fast, guys. This that, has been a fast year. And there's... I mean, just think about how much construction has to happen between now and 2026. That's going to be And then the next impressive. project will be started by then and maybe almost done, half done or something like that. Yeah, Trenton, you and I were just chatting briefly before the show about the next project. And if you drive by Saddle Creek and Farnham on the northwest corner of the University of Nebraska Medical Center campus, you can see the site that was formerly home to the J.P. Lord School and the Monroe Meyer Institute has been graded like crazy. And then on the west side of Saddle Creek, it looks like there's some dirt surcharging that I assume is going to be related to the new administrative tower. And then there's going to be a parking garage over there and an extension of the street. So a lot of activity. And then the steel castings plant is down to the steel. Yeah, the frame. Yeah, the frame, yeah. So uh, I can't wait to see what that looks like. And that'll be incubator and offices. And and that should open, I think that's 25, 2025, where it opens, or maybe even sooner. Um, so we won't have to wait quite as long for the steel castings plant to become the innovation center. 
And that's your news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. They know mortgages. Give them a call or stop by 114th and Davenport Street. All right, now it's time to get serious. Uh, The phone number is 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. Put that... um, uh, put that phone to good use and call us and ask us a question. You know, we get a ton of questions on between the different social media platforms and the email and why we do our best to answer them all. We, I know we miss some. I know for sure I dropped some through the cracks. So if you are if you're, have a question you really want to know, now's a great time to call and get through to us. Yeah, because we're actually here live and in person. So you're listening to Grow Omaha. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot are joined by Brad Williams from ENA Consulting and Brad Williams Photography. The show's brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DNM Roofing and Siding. We'll be back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. It's funny that you said from West Omaha when. I live further east than both of you. Yeah. 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 West Omaha yeah. question. From that guy who lives out west. Uh, what would you be, Midtown? Close anymore, 90th? You know, you can't say Midtown because that is yeah, the those name people of an official all, area. Yeah. That's a defined yeah, area. Too far I, east. I, think you would I would just say the west side area. Or, yeah, I'd say the west side area or can west, you, west central. Can you see the uh, call track? Uh, yes, I can. It's empty right now. Unfortunately, there's no one on it. Okay, there so be. if no one... Grow up, uh, oh, you have oh, a got a first call. I should do that. Uh, what, you didn't get to make it to the downtown library. You can talk about your visit oh, there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can talk about the art fair. Okay. Oh, about, nothing's uh, going on in 90th Sunnersdale Square. Art there. DTO Library. Brian. Okay, we Brian. just stay there. Hold on. Give me a couple of minutes. Don't come across the street. Hang on. Serving Omaha since 1990. Is Westlake moving by Mangelson's? Is that a yes. rumor? It's That's right. Everyone's it's a done deal. deal. That's a deal. Everyone's done. Everyone's done. That was a tough deal. We try to move them into the where Goodwill is yeah. now. And, they're, they don't pay a lot of rent, and they want to, yeah. They're going to, but you know, a lot Where of these, are they moving over there? They're it's moving in um, just south of Tom Kelly's Pro Bowling so, Pro Shop. Left fit? Where the CrossFit is, or the, whatever. The one good thing about it there is they, they'll have a lot of outdoor uh, yeah. flower and garden. It'll be interesting to see what they fill. Uh, the Vegas area fills it up with. So that's <clears throat> why the, the, the haunted house was closing, and that rumor's true. But Mangelson's announced this is the, the last year of oh, really? oh, oh, I forgot about that haunted house. Yeah, yeah, that's across the street, though. Oh, oh no. They're, they're going to be on the same side as Mangelson's. Did you get the Westlake Ace Hardware deal done at Westgate? What's your first name? Oh, it is on the same. It is on the same. Yeah, right? yeah the next. It'd be like just north of Mangelson's, I believe. Part of town you're calling about. Yeah, and someone asking about City Center and La Vista. That's going to be interesting. But there was just a... Be diplomatic in our answers. Someone said, or someone, one of the local TV stations just had an update on it yeah. in the last week. Uh, they have their first concert announced. Yeah, yeah. I think, didn't I hear that? When is that concert? Yeah. The restaurant's backed out. Gotcha. Hold on. We're What's that called? Admiral? Yeah. Well, they're going to, they were like investing out. in their own stuff. Yeah. Is that the Admiral or what is it called? Or, or Astro. Astro, yeah. Astro, yeah. Astro Theater, Midtown. Um, that was the same. That was the developer's own restaurant, wasn't it? I think they were a separate organization. But there may have been some ties. I think if you go to City Center, I, I believe it's listed under their website. Or uh, the not City Center. Um, Okay, here. City Ventures. City Ventures. Yeah. Yeah. I could be wrong on that, but I thought I heard that the restaurants fell through. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not a Similar to many of projects. 20. 20 seconds? Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. And you see the number. Huh? There's 384 yeah, new luxury calls. apartments yeah. of Avere. Two calls. What are we talking about? Oh, city. The there's, there's, there's two Center. public parking. They're, they're finishing the second one that the city paid for. All right, here we have. All right. Mm-hmm. 
And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot sitting here in the studio, as we always are. We're joined by our good friend and colleague, Brad Williams, who is the owner of Brad Williams Photography, also with ENA Consulting, a civil engineering firm here in town. It is the call-in show, 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. Uh, we're going to get to uh, our call, first two callers, Brian and Pamela, here in just in a moment. I uh, do want to remind you, though, that that uh, if you ever find yourself in a situation in which the outside of your car gets a bump, bruise, scratch, or scrape, just go to Dingman's Collision Center. Uh, Trenton and I have uh, had the privilege of working with Dingman's for a long time in the real estate world. Trenton does real estate deals for them. And, um, and we've also had uh, occasion to have them fix our cars and cannot speak highly enough about the service and the uh, quality workmanship that you get from Dingman's Collision Center. Also brought to you by D&M Roofing and Siding. All right. First phone call of the show goes to Brian, who has a question about La Vista. Good morning, Brian, and welcome. Morning. Thanks for taking the call, guys. You bet. Um, I've been uh, watching the, the city center there in La Vista kind of grow over the last several months to a couple of years and i was just kind of curious if there's any estimated timelines for when that's going to be completed and like what kind of retail or uh restaurants do we know of what's going to be going in there okay trent you want to give it a start yeah the uh the heights tap room has already uh been open for quite a while that that seems to be pretty successful they've got a something like 28 beers on tap um they've got a stretch lab and a nail salon, and then Turf Tank, which is an interesting business. And I don't know if this is their headquarters or not, but if you look at their website, Turf Tank is like is a machine that they put paint or something into it. They program it, and it can draw all the lines on the field and the letters in the end zone and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever guys ever seen those reels? Nope. On social media? It's pretty cool. I don't know how they landed that one. But uh, there was a thing called Lincoln's Pub, and we don't know the status of that, whether... Uh, that's going forward or not, but I know they're trying to track a bunch of different restaurants, and they've announced that the um, was it this summer they hope to have the uh, music venue open, the Astro. They well, they announced a concert, and I'm drawing a blank on who. Well, it was a national recording artist that we've all heard of. But, mm-hmm. uh, so the first show has already been announced. It's booked and yeah. announced. Yeah, yeah. We're not sure about those restaurants. I've I've heard some conflicting reports as to whether those are actually going to happen there or not. Um, I would say that what they have built so far, though, looks very attractive. And, um, you know, it's kind of the, the intention of the projects is to function as the downtown that La Vista never had. And, um, and it probably will do a pretty good job of that. And unless there's something that's completely out of the ordinary with the development, I would say that there's so many residences in that area, you know, within a 10 mile uh, drive of that venue that. It's just a matter of time if they start booking shows that that's going to fill up. Yeah, yeah, and and the uh, the city already built one parking garage, and the second parking garage, right on Eighty Fourth Street, it's about five hundred and seventy stalls is is getting completed right now. But you have to remember, guys, it's been so long since Walmart closed, and and the retail paradigm kind of shifted a mile uh, south to to seventy second and east to seventy second, uh, and and Giles, and so I think that. The better the tenant mix, the more apartments, uh, the more drive-by uh, vision they have, I, I think it'll pick up. Okay, Brian, we appreciate the call. We now go to Pamela, who has a call about West Maple. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I have a question about a uh, strip mall that is all on West Maple, next door to Hobby Lobby, behind Aldi there. Uh, There's a really attractive strip mall that was built, and um, it's been vacant for like two years. It's never had a tenant. And I was just wondering what the story is with that strip mall. The the developer, uh, BHI, who's done that whole development, Whispering Ridge has done a great job on it. And and I don't know if it's because that shopping center kind of sits back a little bit or the right tenants haven't come along, but uh, they've they've done a great job building that shopping center, and it, it is puzzling. You'd think that, that they'd aggressively fill it with tenants. They, they've got a ton of projects. Uh, this is one of them, and um, we, we'd, we'd like to see it filled as well because you've got Hobby Lobby there, you've got Target, you've got a lot of complimentary 
uh, businesses there, but sometimes these things take longer than others. And, the, and BHI has done great projects all over the whole metro area, so yeah. it's not like they're like a one-off that's struggling. They're a great, great uh, developer. Do we know where in the 168th and Maple area Mercado is opening? I do not. Because because there, there's room in that strip center. Because they've been they they keep saying they're going to be going to 168th and Maple, and I wondered if that was the site. Because uh, yeah, I'm with you, Pamela. It's a very nice looking center, and kind of surprising um, that it appears to still be empty. But um, we'll keep our eye on it, and um, hopefully uh, they'll get some tenants in there pretty soon. We appreciate the call. Okay, now we go to Jeff. Jeff, you are the next contestant on the Grow Omaha Game Show. Hey, um, I don't know if you guys know, um, you know, Warren Buffett is a 10% shareholder in Kroger Foods. And um, I'm just from somebody who knows uh, their real estate team has been in town quite a bit uh, snooping around. I guess uh, since Buffett bought it prior to uh, the pandemic, Omaha is uh, on Kroger's uh, uh, list of expansions. And um, just uh, Kroger has super centers also, and I guess they're looking at three new stores in Omaha. I don't know, and I, I, I I'm just going to tell you, I know this for sure. Have you guys heard any more? No, I, and I I hope you're right because I, I know that I, I'm familiar with the the super stores, and you know we would love to see one say by the ballpark on Highway 370 which is kind of a, not a food desert, but it's certainly a kind of a tweener um, for grocery stores that would be a great location for it. Uh, Kroger's a good, a good brand. And, and, um, and know, just to make sure everyone knows, Baker's is Kroger. Right. Okay. Make sure everyone and, and, knows and that. And so, you know, Baker's does a good job, but, but High V has really been the dominant force in the last decade. And I remember when Baker's had like 34, 35% of the market and, and, uh, High V has come in pretty fast, and and uh, hopefully, if Warren Buffett has any say, that they'll they'll step it up in Omaha. Yeah, um, um, I I do know for a fact he's um, the CEO of Kroger has been in town probably in the last sixteen months, six to eight times, and I know he meets with him. Yeah, T- tell him to call uh, Trent and Maggot for better locations. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just didn't know, and I, I've heard that they are actually looking at the downtown location. We we would love that. You know, maybe they would go to uh, White Lotus's development uh, on that ninety uh, acre site. That'd be excellent. Yeah, um, um, I just didn't know if you guys have heard any more. I know again, their real estate team was they had fifteen people in town three weeks ago. From the real estate team. Yes, send us so. send us a message. We'd love to learn more about it. Yeah, very interesting okay. s- stuff. Yeah, it's it's funny because you know you talk about the downtown grocery store. Ever since uh, the city and White Lotus uh, released those renderings a couple weeks ago for the Civic site, and everyone keeps saying, "Oh, you know, may a Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or an Urban Fairway or uh, some sort or like uh, Costantino's in, in downtown KC or something like that." Who knows? Maybe uh, Kroger could do a an urban version of Baker's or something like that. You'll have, you know, um, like escalators where you can put your cart on. Just like the Target, uh, like two-story Targets in downtown areas have. Um, Interesting stuff. All right, let's uh, take our middle-of-the-show break for the news. When we come back, Michael, you will be the first caller. So, Michael, don't go anywhere. Uh, We know uh, you want to talk about something on 144th Street. Other than Michael, though, the phone lines are open. If you would like to participate, just dial 402-558-1110. Once again, 402-558-1110. You're listening to Grow Omaha. Brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and DM Roofing and Siding. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. I switched those oh, headphones. Oh, yeah. And then I turned. I couldn't get my feet over the, the ridge. Off. It ripped it right off of the. Uh, I couldn't get my wheels out uh, over the ridge. <laughs> it was like. I'm on the, it was kind of like. Uh, uh, that little bit on that camera right there. Two stooges. Two stooges. <laughs> <laughs> they have the two stooges over here. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Odd or even. <laughs> Did, uh, I saw you got a feeling with a little leg grab. I didn't do that earlier. I usually do. Yeah, you, oh, Jason. Jason Thielen. Yeah. Grab uh, leg. Oh, Thielen. <laughs> I thought you got... Okay, feeling. I think. Oh, did that show up on camera? I think he said oh, yeah. Oh, did he grab Jason's leg? You, you point out to him? I said I was 
I saw Trent gave you a little leg grab. And he goes, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the hell was that? And you should see when I, I do said, it to he, women that don't know me. <laughs> I say he does it to loosen people up. Does something to people. <laughs> Usually it causes them to stumble on their words. I know that. Did you... I never heard uh, any more from Chris. Did, did you guys ever talk about uh, a search function on the... Oh, we need to... Chris, we need to talk about the search function on the website. Because there's so much valuable information in, yeah. the, in, the, in that, whatever it is, a year, two years worth of yeah. newsletters now. So I like find myself like, all right, I think I think it was in there about a month ago, and I start going oh, back through. Oh, you know, oh, keyword yeah. search. Yeah. Well, because Chris, let us know. It's an issue for me because when I write the newsletter, I'm always going back to look at stuff, yeah. and I'm like, where was that? And so I'll do. Um, like I'll I'll say like a business name and then I type in Grow Omaha Weekly Market. I wonder how hard that'd be. To and then, do. but the problem is, it yeah, doesn't always. It'll give okay. some results that have it's nothing to do with that thing. I had the same problem just in my inbox and on my. I uh, tried to search for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything's on it. That guy was very interesting. Like he 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 said he's very factual. We have no idea how to yeah, prove we, that he's right. Yeah, we but don't know if he has any credibility. To yeah. say that a group from Kroger's in town was a huge okay. grocery store chain with owns bankers and several others. And Warren Buffett's owning. Ten percent of it. That was news. Since Kroger's owned Baker's twenty some years now, yeah, they've never actually built a new store in Omaha, have they? That's my knowledge. Seventy Second Ames was in Albertsons, right? And then, yeah. and they bought Albertsons and made it into a Baker's. But I don't think they've ever built a brand new ground up store. High V's are kicking ass in this market. I mean. You can't get away from them. No. High V's so prices, so though, are like, high. Have, are, seem more expensive than the yeah, other Yeah, I have a brother that says that Baker's is, be, is, yeah. is a better price. Because I know. But you would, you would think that the Baker's used to be so, you know, with the carry out and all that kind yeah. of stuff that they used to have. You would think Baker's has a better image to me than High V, but everybody says that. that I don't know because like we, we only use High V as a Baker's. convenience store because it's, it's yeah. so close to our house. We use it as a convenience store mm -hmm. for quick odds and ends, but for like real grocery shopping. Steph does Costco, Walmart, and Target because uh, she gets better. Yeah. And I think the only reason you don't go to Baker's is because from our house, it's not, not you don't think of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. It all depends what kind of palette you have, really, if you think about it. You know, I have a good palette. <laughs> you know, I think you and I've kind of come. You know, you know, you can, if you're going in bulk and Costco's, t Target. Do you know what conclusion I've come up with palettes? I think a certain person I know may be a little too picky. <laughs> really? Yeah. Does she weigh less than me? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, she doesn't eat very much. You, can you trust someone that doesn't eat very much? I don't let her. I, I eat all the everything. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you had a 14 inch snack in high school. That's true, and I ate a lot. <laughs> Yeah. It was funny, we had three brothers, or a friend, and there was three boys in the family, and the oldest was the biggest, and the middle was the second biggest, and the little brother was the skinniest. Yeah. We always joke around that there was no food left. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they ate in order of age, and there was no food left. Yeah. Sort of the run to the litter. <laughs> We're the opposite, unfortunately. <laughs> the run to the litter got no food. God, I, I, uh, when, I was, when I was in my super skinny days, um, um, yeah, hi. I could eat Omaha, 24 so. hours a day and not put on an ounce. Isn't that amazing? Way. Yeah, it was frustrating. Did it go right through? Like, did it ever run through it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I, I don't think I shit more than That's a normal fortunate. person. That's not frustrating. You, you know about my, my no, tennis ball as camp a, theory. As a young guy, a you have yeah. three as, tennis as balls. Dude, that's Chris, you like this. Too. You yes. can only put three tennis balls on a can. For young women, it's a you try to put a fourth one. Another one for guys. Got to come out. They wanted to put on. I could never do it. Yeah. Now I just put on. I finally put on weight one day and it was all in the middle where I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. You should get a bunk a dunk see if you can move it around a little bit. What's that? Big booty. A big booty? Like a big butt? Yeah. Oh. But dunk dunk I don't put any weight on my butt. It's all right here. You're a flat ass. Bought and paid for. Don't be such a beer, flat right? ass. Flat ass. <laughs> Bought and paid for. <laughs> the flat ass press. <laughs> I suppose they're kind of a competitor to ours, but not really. They're not so into business coverage. Really, there are no other media outlets. Like that Matt are, Baker Hansen. There are no other media outlets that are true competitors to ours. Is he Matt Baker Hansen or is Matt Hansen? You would have to ask. Um, okay, so we got Michael, then Jim, and then a caller. 
Color X. Color X. On line two. Hi, what's going on in the northeast corner of 108th and Center? You're next on the Grom Hall show. Uh, he ain't here. Oh, he left? Yeah, he just oh. had the question, and I was oh. like, okay, I'll put it down. You can address it or not address okay. it. Okay. Yeah, if you don't stay online, there's no guarantee we take your... If you don't stay online, we only take your question if we're desperate. dumb enough to put up that house right there. Desperate for content. It is. It's far enough along, you can tell it's a house now. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That water, did you see that water main break in front of that? <laughs> oh, that was that in front of that house? Well, it's a little bit up. Oh, okay. They've closed... Well, they did the pile of dirt now. From 105th all the way down to 108th, it was closed for almost a whole week. And then now they got one lane open each direction, but it, I mean, it, Chris from the Royal Herald had a drone picture looking down in the hole. It was a huge, um, really? huge hole, yeah. That's crazy. Gro uh, Grove um, so much first thing. By the way, though, it is a nice house. It's oh. a nice looking house. They're putting a huge like, waterfall in the front yard. Yeah, it's a nice looking house. You gotta put big tree low. You gotta put like... Uh, but to get to it, though, you it's only could come in one way. Right, right, right. I think situation. you need, also need a 12-foot stone wall. I think they originally bought it to do like condos, and then I don't think you get the zoning for it. Plus you got that creek back there. Yeah. I don't know if the neighbors. A great place to raise children. That was a, what was Dr. Straw Hacker. Straw Hacker? Straw Hacker. No, something like. Swashbuckler. No, so Dr. Dr. Swashbuckler. Straw Hacker. No, I know what you're thinking. No, I think Are we going back on? Right. Oh. I met him at his. <laughs> I had that some property listed with him one time. At his asparagus farm. Asparagus farm? Asparagus farm. That's definitely not the highest and best use of a piece of urban property. Well, it was up by the airport. Oh, I thought we were talking about 108th and uh, Center. Yeah, he yeah. had that. I think it was Swashbuckler. Well, it was a straw hat, but that's okay. Here we go. Why can't I hear anything? And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot joined by Brad Williams today, which means that it is the call-in show, 402-558-1110. And uh, we're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. And before we get to uh, Michael and Jim, our next two callers, do want to give you something that you've been waiting for, and that is the Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week, which is brought to you by Noddle Companies. Uh, Noddle Companies is based right here in Omaha under the leadership of Jay Noddle and a, a team of outstanding professionals. They have projects all over the place, not just Omaha. I mean, they are a national real estate development company, but they love their hometown and they're doing big projects, you know, things like uh, the Builders District, downtown, north downtown, uh, Steel Ridge and the Gretna Papillion area. Um, doing uh, projects like River's Edge uh, in Council Bluffs. But today we talk about perhaps their best known local project, Exarbon. In Exarbon Village, the Interrail Food Hall has a new concept. It's called Soulful, and it's uh, S O L F U L, Soulful. And they had a soft opening in the Interrail Food Hall. Uh, the tagline is Food with a Purpose, and they sell Argentinian empanadas, uh, beef, spicy beef, three cheese onion, and spinach, to be exact. Looks like a cool place, and early reviews have been positive from what I've heard. This is the best time of year to go to Xarban Village. The vibe is great. The weather's been great. And you can see all ages down there just kind of hanging out. It's very organic feeling. Oh, it's awesome. And, and it, the, the mixed use, all the apartments and, and the, the entertainment in the park. And, and the food choices. It is just neat. Last Sunday, right, we, we got done with church at around 10 o'clock or so. We went straight down to the farmer's market and at Exarban Village, and we just kind of hung around, checked out all the booths, and then uh, then we went and had lunch in the Interrail Food Hall. All Each family member went to a different Interrail Food Hall restaurant, so we had four restaurants represented at our, our at our table. And the whole time, you walk around there, and you feel like you're in a big city environment. There's just so much to do, and it's so cool. Does the Farmer's Market Exarban go on Sundays as well? or Sundays. And it, it's downtown on Saturdays, okay. and then it's Exarban Village on Sundays. Gotcha. And that's your Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight O the Week, uh, brought to you by Noddle Companies. You can find out more about Noddle by going to noddlecompanies.com. Michael, you have been patient. Thank you for waiting, and you are next on Grow Omaha. Yeah, good morning. Hi, Michael. So I work at uh, part-time over at Woodhouse Place. It's corner of Giles and 144th, but just south of there was the old Baxter Ford, and I've watched over the last year at least 
different activities going on over there. I think at one point I saw Sarpy County sheriffs pulling into their express lane and, I don't know, doing something on their vehicles and stuff. But most recently, right out in front of the building, they've now re-poured concrete and they're doing landscaping. And just wondering, what's any idea what uh, might be going in there? It's been a few years since that sold. And I, and I remember it was a private company that bought it. Um, I'm trying to, re- I don't recall which one it was, but they've really been sitting on that for a few years, haven't they? I um, Yeah, they have. I heard a, a rumor about it within the last half year um, that if they've already, and this might not be accurate based on what you said, Michael, but I had heard that it was going to be some sort of industrial uh, building, but that could be totally wrong. Um, looks like we've got. A, looks like you've given us a little bit of homework uh, that we have to do in the next week. Um, hopefully, I don't know if you listen regularly, but we'll do a little homework on this and either put it in the newsletter or or mention it next week or maybe both. But um, sorry, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't sure if even possibly that parking lot is pretty good, and they only poured concrete up to a certain portion. Whether they're going to parcel it into two separate properties now, or one person might take the whole thing, or what the heck's going on? Um, okay, well, I'm sorry you, you uh, held for so long just to hear us say we're not sure, um, but uh, but but we'll do a little bit of homework on that. So, All right, sounds thank, good. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Um, uh, 402-558-1110 is the phone number, 402-558-1110. Uh, Let's go to Jim. Good morning, Jim. You're next on Grow Omaha. Well, thank you. You know, OPPD has just announced they're going to double their power generation here in the next couple of years. And Trent just said that sometimes the location of solar panel farms is controversial. So I don't understand why they don't reopen uh, the Cooper Nuclear Power Station. I don't really see why they closed it down in the first place. Uh, it's clean generation. It's better than coal or natural gas. Uh, it seems crazy to me. I appreciate the call, uh, Jim, and I, I don't think you can reopen it because last time I drove by, they were dismantling well, it, weren't they? He said Cooper, which was the oh, one Cooper. down south. Oh, okay. Which I don't, I'm not familiar with, but yes, the one in. Well, I might be mixed up. The it, one in Fort Calhoun has been of, taken apart. Yeah, I was thinking of the Fort Calhoun one, Jim. Sorry about that. But yeah, because that one is is. Like, well, it could be either one. Yeah, you know, I I, I agree with you. Uh, Personally, I think it's crazy that uh, U.S. utilities are not doing more nuclear power. It's so effective and uh, and it works well. I think there's a lot of misperceptions uh, in the public as to the safety of of nuclear power. That could be part of it. If I remember correctly, OPPD at the time when they announced the decommissioning, I think there were some costs and um, uh, and logistics with maintaining a nuclear plant that they may not have thought was worth it uh, for them anymore. But on a broader picture, you know, why are we not doing more nuclear power in this country does seem kind of asinine to me. Uh, but there's plenty of room in Nebraska to build solar panels. I mean, we have land, um, although, I, you know, that land's good productive ag land, but I'm sure they can find places to put up a lot of panels. Jim, we appreciate the call and we appreciate you listening. Uh, Jerry, we're going to put you on hold for just a moment. You, I know you want to talk about economic conditions. So, Jerry, please stay with us. We're going to do our final break of the hour. We'll have our lightning round from Turner Construction, and then we will answer Jerry's question. If anyone wants to take a chance and wiggle in another phone call, go for it. 402-558-1110. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. When you're in the mood for some that, that's Jerry Slusky. No, wasn't. No, was that just Jerry? That was, that guy that called in. Yeah. Was, it's uh, oh, that's Jerry. That's Jerry. Oh, oh. What's, oh, what's the question? I thought you were talking to Jim. The economic guy was what? Economic conditions question. How do you know that's Jerry? Because he's texting me. What's he saying? Oh, I, I what what corner? Talking, what what house is on Giles? What corner is that guy talking about? Where that back the hill? Was? It was originally Schreier Ford. To the south, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's on South 144th Street, Sarpy County, just north of uh, the Sap Brothers exit. Is there a construction uh, company named Hymes? Hymes. That's just, that's yeah. it. Hymes. That's they who's there. Have it. That's who bought it. Did you look it up? No, call or call. It's Hymes. Oh, yeah, Hymes Construction. I remember that now. Hymes. Okay, Hymes Construction. Do we they, they, do do of, do they do a lot of. Don't they do a lot of roads? Like they own it, or they're the contractor on buildings? He sounded like. No, I think Hymes bought it. it. Okay. I remember that. Who is that? 
Is it it's, south, it's south of 370? No, it's it's well north of 370. It, it's right across from the old Bucky's. Like just north west. Of, yeah, north of Sap Brothers, south of Giles. There's like a bobcat of Omaha next to it. Yeah. And there's a there's a coffee, coffee shop, shop with a opens. shipping container on the roof. You can look, look at look at here. Look at, here's Sap Brothers. Okay. I can't find the, the I'm on the GIS, but I can't get the air. Let's up. use uh, Google. Let me pull up a Google Map. That's better. Um, for for a, it's better for just seeing things. Okay. I'll look up Hymus, what Hymus does, but that, 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 you always see their trucks. Do you guys use Hymus? Yeah. Okay, here it is, Tom. Okay, here is Giles. Okay. Here's 144th and Giles. It is right here. Yeah. So here's, here's Hardee's. Here's that no-name hotel. Um, they do a lot with... This is this place right here, 144th and Meadows Parkway. Yeah, this is and it's north of, it's uh, just south of that hearty hot nice coffee with the shipping container. Jen. Okay. It's a construction contractor from Omaha. Wide range of construction services. Divisions. I think they build a lot of subdivisions for that. Excavation, demo, site prep. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals and Trenton Maga joined by Brad Williams from ENA Consulting and Brad Williams Photography. It's the call-in show, 402-558-1110. Jerry, going to get to you in just a moment. But first, uh, we are brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding, top-notch uh, roofing company serving Nebraska and Western Iowa. How about a little bit of Turner Construction lightning round in which we can tell you about a few things going on in a really short period of time. Turner Construction uh, is building Omaha's environment in a way that uh, few other do. Outstanding projects, outstanding place to work. Turner Construction uh, makes this possible because they care about uh, the Omaha community and they care about Grow Omaha and Grow Omaha listeners. So call Turner Construction for any construction need you might have. A couple little quick things for you today before we get to our last call. Fig is the new restaurant inside of the uh, Kiewit Luminarium. Going to start serving dinners on Thursday uh, nights. They're normally open just for breakfast and lunch. McDonald's is coming to 204th and uh, Q, northeast corner. Uh, Trenton is going around town with Twin Peaks, uh, looking for some new sites for a potential comeback to the market. Williamsburg Pizza is opening May 30th at 168th and Harrison in the early review views have been good. All right. A couple minutes for Jerry uh, with a call about economic conditions. Uh, Jerry, welcome to the show. Do we have Jerry? All right. We might not. We may have lost Jerry. Um, wait, is Jerry on the phone? Still? I'm here. I'm oh, sorry. there he is. I'm now here. we've got him. I'm okay. Here. Go ahead, Jerry. Hey, guys. Thanks. I'll take just a minute. Uh, the show is called Grow Omaha. And you guys do a fantastic job of being the spirit of Omaha and, uh, you know, being cheerleaders for everything that's gone on and is going on. Uh, I must tell you that uh, we've been sampling uh, pretty much the entire commercial real estate community uh, over the last several months, getting ready for our annual CRE Summit coming in August, and have found something that's negative. What's that, that Jerry? is... <laughs> High construction costs and high, high interest rates. And uh, I think it might be good to have a show or part of a show that talks about uh, how to work through a very high interest rate environment like we're in now. We've all been through it before. But uh, it would be beneficial for, I think, your listeners to understand that we are in it. Things have slowed down. Uh, in fact, some things have absolutely stopped because the numbers don't work. And it's a big concern for the engineers, architects, developers, brokers, lenders, title, uh, everyone seeing it, guys. And I just thought it might be a good idea to visit that subject uh, because that's the reality today. Uh, absolutely. Um, and that's Jerry Slusky, who's the, the founder and a local attorney and developer and founder of the CRE Summit for the last, what, 35 years now? 
34th this year. Thank you. And, and that will be when? August, August 25. Everybody yeah. should check out attendcresummit.com uh, and uh, go go to that. But but as far as this show, yeah, we need to do our part, Jeff. The uh, construction costs are high. Uh, cost of labor is high. And interest rates are high. But, but we're, Jerry, we're surprisingly busy in our office. And, and there's still a lot of money in the market, which is good. I think developers and, and real estate investors have uh, squirreled money away. Well, I think it's, it's working for existing projects, but the new development for conventional players, not institutions like you guys talk a lot about, but rather just the individual developers, it's, it's very, very difficult to make these things work. And that's the focus of our attention this year at the summit. Well, Jerry, we uh, we couldn't agree more, and uh, maybe we'll talk offline about doing something just like that. Uh, appreciate you calling in. It's good to hear your voice, Jerry, and even people who don't directly work in commercial real estate but are just fascinated by it probably would enjoy your event on August 25th. It's always good. Thanks, guys. And it was not a plug for the summit, but just rather the reality of the marketplace. Well, we appreciate you calling. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Jerry Slusky from uh, the Commercial Real Estate Summit. So, guys, uh, we wrap up the show with uh, an interesting uh, piece of news that I'd like to highlight. Uh, Nebraska now has uh, the uh, lowest unemployment rate it has ever had. Wow. And second lowest in the country. And the music is playing, which means I've got to shut up. So, Brad, thanks for being a part of it, as hey, always. Yeah, I always enjoy being on. Thanks. Brad Williams, Brad Williams Photography and ENA Consulting. That's it. Uh, Uh, For the show and the Turner Construction Lightning Round, I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by the aforementioned Turner Construction, as well as Dingman's Collision Center and D&M Roofing and Siding on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.